send you red eye tickets and stuff, you know. Not necessarily this thing here, but uh, over the years, you know, got you going up, at, leaving out at 6 o'clock and got a lecture the same day. So, you got to take all kind of energy boosters and stuff. So, um, we on? Yeah. So, uh, we here today, what's the, what's the date? 13th. The 13th, the Pearl of Africa, downtown, what's this, uh, South Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, a unique brand of Negro, the Philadelphia Negro, and all. Uh, you only got a few that's unique. Chicago is very unique. Very unique. Um, and then it depends on migration patterns, too. Then the rest of the people just from, like New York, they're just a bunch of niggas from South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia. <laughs> you know, it's based on the migration pattern. You know. Uh, Chicago is a place they got by four, they got so many interest groups converging into one until, boy, you got to appease about 2,000 different types of um, entities or groups and stuff like that, which I think is the detriment of all of us is these particular groups at this particular time. And if you are in a particular group and all, I think that you should go clandestine or go underground where you supposedly at this particular time have seen everything that's been the all, ha, ha, that, that the so-called conscious movement has to offer and realize that you got to take all this stuff and, and sweep it up together because it's all in fragments. And that's one of the biggest problems right now is we still got these different groups playing tug of war with ideology. And most of it is, deals with mostly historical aspects. We should be at this particular time right now, if we understand we are the original people and very ancient and we can't calculate our time. Same thing Elijah Muhammad told us years ago. That I think at this particular time, I don't think that history should be uh, the, the primary focus. It's, I mean, we've, we've had the last 15 or 14 maximum years of history with, from the Afrocentric movement on in, and basically our plight has gotten even worse. So obviously, the argument is not based on history. You see what I'm saying? The argument now is, is in all honesty, I think what happens at this particular time, we have to sweep all things together. And in this particular case, uh, what we're dealing with now in 2001 is that most of the actual groups um, somehow are based off of righteous and piety. So in the last, uh, in the last um, 14 years, we, to show how much the devil a white man was, we had to bring this mythology of how pious and how righteous and how beautiful we are. And in so many words now, we understand that... Um, the walls are tumbling down around the world on piety and righteousness. So that means in actuality there is a whole nother expression. And in so many words, the expression is basically it's pretty much um, most of the things that the church told you not to do, you're supposed to be indulging in. Now that's a whole nother topic there. And so, so, so we get into a, a whole gripping topic. We always try to bring something new. And that is the, that is the role of of knowledge and information is if you keep going and you keep learning when it gets to a particular area where it might be controversial even to yourself you need to try to weigh analyze and try to uh and try to see the bigger picture and which i'll try to do is explaining the both sides of the bigger picture in a few minutes uh before i go on like i said there's an attack around the country to shut down consciousness in the aspect of you got your terrorist bill that was passed in November, which means we are under uh, martial law. Been under martial law, but now it's official. Uh, whenever they can try you, um, arrest you, try you, and execute you, and nobody has nothing to say about it at all, basically you're talking about uh, the same thing in America, say that they're not, they are. All under the guise of terrorists, they can so-called suspend all the the laws that they claim they had, which we know that wasn't subject to, uh, that wasn't subject to us as far as um, we never was a part of those so-called American freedoms. We know now that it's official. Under the name of terrorism, they can do what the hell they want to do. And pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, that's the way it is. So like I said, the, the spaces as far as where we go and have these particular meetings around the country is, dying, is drying up. And basically, the first people that they stepped to was the people under the 501c3, which was tax exempt. I had an incident where it was the first time in my own hometown, 
first time ever I was not able to be allowed to speak was in November. Um, and the government was real crafty about it. They waited till the last day. And then the next, the, 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 the very last day, and then the next day they told the people, uh, the people told us the, the day before that we weren't going to be able to speak. Now that was so crafty because they had a whole week to do it and we could put a, probably could have found another place. But they did it that way and all because you know it was a government thing, it was 501c3, they were soup line, that's another thing, all these old soup kitchens and all this bullshit. And I'm um, pretty much feeding the homeless and all this kind of thing here. I mean, all, all, I mean, you got a 4,000 churches doing this and we even have to look into this whole homeless problem and stuff like that. I mean, uh, we supposed to be gods and if a black man can't put no soup in a bowl, then something is mighty wrong. We just talking about taking some soup and putting it in a damn bowl. Now, it don't take no a PhD or some metaphysical uh, 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 litmus test or no type of white man opportunity to find you some damn soup and put in a bowl. Then we find out in actuality that the homeless thing is all designed by the government. Give you an example, um, downtown Atlanta, I counted something like 500 homeless people in the course of from June to August of 1998, and most of them black men. You know, most of them black men. And then I found out what was happening was, is on, but I noticed on Fridays, a lot of the new people that hit the street had armbands on. So apparently what had happened was is the government every Friday they let so many umpteen black men out of the crazy house, out of the mental institution to create the facade that there's this homeless problem, not necessarily because uh, they want to help raise awareness for people who don't have a place to stay, but they have to still project a certain image or a certain aspect um, to the masses of the people in the aspect of if you got a generally a conservative mindset that has been uh, designed for white folks and so-called the newly upper mobile black folks over the last 20 years in order for them to 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 manifest this conservative idea they have to show another side of the track and and for them to base their conservativeness off of so if you got a thousand black men downtown hassling you about give me some spare chains and stuff like this, you see. This brings on an alternative or uh, alternative viewpoint. So they have to have certain things in design to keep this bullshit going. Case in point, you had, you know, you had all these uh, so-called, um, these movies, uh, Boys in the Hood, uh, New Jack City and all this that came out at the turn of l last decade, you know, 1990, 1991 and all, to go and coincide with the whole crack epidemic thing that the government put out in order for them to 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 make this a reality they got to have so much propaganda going down so as a result they get the greatest actor we got now supposedly and make him do the same new jack city movie yeah. Yeah. in 2001 and then give this motherfucker academy award and this is all a part of propaganda it's designed so now this movie is sanctioned to go around the world so when it goes to Japan, it goes to New Zealand, it goes to Ireland, it goes to London, they go, okay, the business is the same in the hood. You see? When we know basically, man, there ain't no such thing as no hood no more. I know 98% of the cities I've gone through, they have gotten rid of so-called uh, so quote-unquote underclass problem. But if they still got a, if propaganda is if they still got to, to keep a people on the bottom, they have to have a certain viewpoint for people around the world to come and say, these are savage people. So then you take Holly Berry, put her in a movie, and push the rated R thing that they've been trying to push for the last 15 years, they've been trying to push this rated R thing on into a soft porn. You see, nobody would touch it in Hollywood, so what did you do? You get the black girl to do it. And then give her a doggone Academy Awards for the fuck scenes only. You see, had nothing to do, because, I mean, my goodness. I mean, it is even, it is questionable whether she can act or not. I mean, she had 10 years to prove herself. And all of a sudden now, she takes the dog on top off in the first movie, uh, what's that, uh, Swordfish, and then goes to this particular aspect, whereas she goes with this white man that kills in, in Monster Ball, who kills her husband. You see? And I mean, my goodness, this, we're not talking about a person that plays a hillbilly 
uh, in the movie. We talking about a fucking hillbilly in real life, Billy Bob Spartan. You see? I mean, the name right there tell you. So what it is, this is all or nothing but a form of initiation. You see what I'm saying? It's saying if you're going to get something, you got to play to the propaganda machine. So the whole, whole thing is, it's the same thing, the, the black thug or the black hoe. Same as the exploitation deal, but now it's a sanction through the Academy Awards. You see? And this is how these things go. But what happened is, is they said, we're going to bring a high tech, because when the movie gets, becomes an Academy Award movie, this is a movie that is viewed around the world as the premium, cream de la cream. You see? And so therefore, it brings more focus to the black pathology. You see? So she gets this particular award and stuff, you see? So she had to sell out in the movie Swordfish before. And then Denzel had to go and get this movie John Q. To get the Academy Award, he has to do the movie John Q, where he takes over a hospital because they, the HMOs don't pay for his son's operation and the son has got a rear uh, heart, whatever the thing is, um, something. And he needs an operation. And so he takes over the hospital to, uh, to, to show the world that, you know, this is wrong, you know, because a person is poor, they deserve to live, and he does all this and makes an awesome case throughout the whole movie. This is the, ninth, this is the 2002 uh, uh, dog day afternoon where, you know, the person takes over the building and everybody, he becomes a general hero. You see what I'm saying? Or the same movie Running Man where, he, you know, he gets on the game show and the people out street rooting for him. So he does all of this to make this case to stand up against the so-called capitalistic machine and then turn right around and bends over to his son, his black son, and tells his black son on his deathbed, don't do like me, you, you go for the money and you sell out. That's the first time ever we sell, that nigga sold out, but this is the first time ever. Listen, no man, you got away scot-free for 10 years, squeaky clean. Now you got to do this. So you, you can't just assume that you're going to sell out. The people go, well, he done sold out. And they say, oh, that's questionable where they sell out. Now this cat actually bends over to his son in the movie and tells his son, you sell out. You see, this is a part of the system so that he can get the Oscar. But here it is again. Here's the same slave mentality. What you hell you need a white man to recommend you, recommend you uh, to recognize you when they're saying, well, he's making $20 million a movie now? So in so many words, this character is under attack everywhere. So you get Michael Jordan, a fucking idiot, to go back and play basketball. Now, fuck, he probably started playing basketball when he was six or eight. So in the scheme of evolutionary, of just basically fundamentalistic humanism, you don't supposed to have the same mindset nearing 40 as you had when you was eight, year, eight years old. Hell, the person I was in when I was 20, I can't even identify with now. That person is long gone. I mean, I remember what I used to wear, I remember, but I'm talking about as far as my mentality. You know what I'm saying? The person that I was when I was 20, when I was 18, that person has been long gone. It would be an alien person compared to me now because even if you don't even get into consciousness, just basically just human history or just basically wisdom that comes along with experience, you don't supposed to be the same person at 40 that you are at fucking 20. You see, so this nigga here is, is, is a year from 40 and running ball and all and getting all hurt again. And then what he does is he takes the entrepreneur thing and takes it, no, we're going to step down from you owning the team we're going to say, we're going to give the team up for you to get a rubber basketball or whatever the deal is to do what you was doing when you was eight years old. You see, all a part of the propaganda machine because in 2002, if you still want to rule over a people, you still have to show those people as being some form of savage. You see, uh, just, just, uh, uh, you know, just, just some things, you know, um, Meanwhile, they lock up H. Rap Brown, Jamil Alameen. They lock him up. Uh, you know, uh, I, I lock this brother up. All black jury indict him. You see, uh, I think they're going to give him life or something. You know, now here it is, a man, in, in, in not only that, they got footage of his innocence. This cop gets killed. 
The, the night that the cop get killed, they got it on all the news. They say they showed a trail of blood. They said, the other cop said, well, whoever shot this cop, we returned fire and we actually hit the person. We hit the person and after hitting that person, you know, that person ran into this little house and all, they showed the actual trail of blood the night before. You see what I'm saying? The night before. Then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, um, they go to court. When they get to Ace Rap Brown, when they first find him, he don't have a mark on him. You see. But it's gone to the point where as they can basically do what they want to do, and there's really nothing you can do about it. But I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how you get an all-black jury go for the bullshit when the civil rights all-stars, like Coretta Scott King came out and said, man, you know they're framing this man. You know, we're talking about black people who don't never have no voice when it comes to the plight of our people. It was so doggone blatant until Coretta Scott King had to come out and go say, come on, y'all. You know they're framing this man. They found bullet cases, they found blood on the scene, but yet when they see this man, this man don't have a bullet wound nowhere on him. You see what I'm saying? But then again, on the other hand, he had a whole bunch of white lawyers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not only that, and then they said that they thought that this trial was going to go on for like a week or two weeks, they thought they were going to have another O.J. Simpson on this thing. The defense said, we rest our case. You see, we rest our case. And all, uh, you know, and then the next thing you know, um, next thing you know, he goes up. He goes up the river in the midst of all this stuff that's actually going down. Now, that's, it's, 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 it's very key because um, this, huh? I think they got a life sentence, yeah. Now remember this now, um, despite what went on, you got to understand that the system of uh, two things, a couple of things happen. Um, if they're going to attack Islam, which, which in so many words, now we know we have a little personal little history with Islam, but then again there's the Islam of the personal history which comes from Drew Ali, Elijah Muhammad, and even when we talk about uh, the, the, the culture of Islam, which is some African motifs was rehashed in this thing that we still get all teary-eyed about. But we're talking about a world system now. We're talking about a world system ruled from Mecca. World system ruled from Rome, the Vatican, and a world system ruled from, ruled from Jerusalem. And you got to understand, this is the major apparatus of world-dominating systems under this so-called religious bullshit, which is a a uh, 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 fascist regime, any way you put it. You see what I'm saying? Now, before you get to that particular aspect, because that's actually spiritual, that all three major religions are now being overhauled. You see, these monster machines that oppress people are now falling, and Islam can place themselves right in the middle of that. You understand what I'm saying? Because you still got the blood of millions of Africans under the Islam thing. You see what I'm saying? Now, we're not talking about our relationship based on whatever religion we got into because we always change those things around up until about 20, 30 years ago, and now that don't work for us no more. You see what I'm saying? So we can say that the, the black church from 1865 to like 1970 was a highly metaphysical and spiritual entity for us when we didn't have nothing else. But it hadn't been too much of that after the, in the last 30 years. But if you're talking about world systems, understand the difference between a personal religion and a world dominating system. The world is dominated from doggone Mecca, Rome, and fucking Israel. And now, in the last six months, you done had attack on Islam that's been toppled. You had an attack on, now you got attack on Judaism that's being toppled, and now you got an attack on the dog on Catholicism that's being toppled. All of this stuff here is spiritual, uh, what is called the return of the Bacchanalian realm, which we'll get into. You see what I'm saying? So don't, under, so don't be misconstrued about um, the African Islam. The Moorish Islam was a political system. Try to understand the difference between Moorish Islam. The Moors went into Islam no different than you go into Democrat, Republican. They can take a political instrument as a driving force to put forth civilization 
and knowledge and ancient wisdom, you see what I'm saying, are half the comedic stuff. Now know the difference in a political system, you see what I'm saying, because we got thousands of texts that have nothing to do with general Islam or the Quran that was brought to Spain with the Moors and, and Europe by the Moors, but yet has nothing to do with Islam. So we understand the difference between an African using something as a political system, which we got to understand that's what white boys do. We didn't ever catch on to this shit. And in all honesty and stuff, that's the way the real civilized person is supposed to do this shit. They're supposed to look at these systems as an organized system, and they're supposed to use them as a political system for leverage. And that's basically what the white boy, if he didn't take nothing, he took that shit. You see? He runs with it. He was taught well on that one. Don't never believe in that shit. Just use it as a political system to gain leverage. You can shape the minds whenever you go on. You see, and that's the difference. We don't want the motherfuckers believing in some shit. You see what I'm saying? Sublime mythology makes grotesque history. You see what I'm saying? And that's why we the ones that's being preyed upon because we still caught up in the bull. So we got all these damn philosophies right now where we're the only people left holding the bag that still doggone in all these sectarian cults and still trying to figure out which one is the most supreme and yet we, 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 we catch in hell to this day. And, but still yet, black people just won't let go. Won't let go. You see, we got to be some kind of ism. You see, now, now going back, that's a major aspect whenever these three major religions is toppled. Now, let's start with the, the Islamic thing because there's one aspect, now, 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 don't get me wrong now. The white boy, or we say the actual governments to be. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, 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 like, like they say, this oligarchy of 5,000 people because the average white person, I'm realizing, don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. We saw that when they bought this whole 9-11 shit. Half of them are dumb as hell. You see what I'm saying? So we need to get out of the mythology that 98% of white people know because they don't. And we see this now when they, uh, when, they, when they let this fool be appointed, Bush, a straight up idiot, and they buy this 9-11 bull. We'll go, I want to go into a science on that. A science on that. A brother from New York gave me the science on this about five or six years ago. A brother was in, entrenched into the into the whole uh, uh, Air Force. He was into the whole naval aviator thing. And then he, and he saw another side and they almost killed him for it. But I want to go into, because to talk about an American spirit. There is an American spirit. You can make a spirit, a spiritual apparatus by using the ancient motifs. You bring energy to it. So there's a legitimate American spirit. How would else this shit would have lasted this long? But I want to deal with that and the renewal of the American spirit, which was this whole campaign with this 9-11 shit was about. You see what I'm saying? So there's a difference now. But um, one aspect we need to deal with right now is they had to take a couple certain key players off the scene to put this whole thing together. Now we know that Judaism was called out as a racist regime in South Africa. And then America pulls out because Israel is the 51st state of America, the state of Israel. And then in the course of weeks, this thing was turned around and them looking like the doggone uh, uh, oppressors to the Arabs looking like the oppressors when they blew up 9-11. But certain key players they had to stop wooden boot. So they knew in this aspect of Islam that if they stepped the call it, he wasn't going to go for the, the flag-waving Mecca thing. So all of a sudden, they set this thing up and call it mysteriously, dies. You see what I'm saying? A couple of months prior. But don't get, don't be fooled. All you got to go do is get the movie Hannibal Lecter. Now in that movie, that movie came out in January or February, right around the same time they call it was poisoned. And we got the, we got, we got the, we, we, we got the scoop on that. Around the same time Collett was poisoned, they came out with the movie Hannibal Lecter. Now in that movie, they would show Hannibal as the so-called fictitious, most dangerous man, public enemy number one. Then they show Ben Laden. And they show Hannibal Lecter, they got his name up under there, and they got Ben Laden's name up under there. And then they show these other four or five people 
and they don't show no names. Now, this movie was, came out in January or February. It was probably made a year pr prior to that. You see what I'm saying? So they had already started this particular campaign, you see, so Colin had to go. Then you see how they had to lock, lock down H. Rap Brown in 2000, Jamil Alameen. So they was getting rid of the so-called Islamic players that would have an alternative view other than Farrakhan saying this is a great country. You see what I'm saying? And acting like Lanky Yankee Doodle Dandy about this whole bullshit that went down. He might throw a few little things up in the mix and say, yeah, you know, uh, you know, that's the way they do. You know, say some things that you already know that the government is doing. That's how you roll it. But on the other hand, this one, oh, this is a great country. He going to speak out about this cat, Pearl. What is, that, what is this guy named Pearl? The old white man that got killed over there? Oh, these Arabs and all, they got Pearl. Now, all of a sudden, he's so interested in a white journalist. Same people who castigated his ass for 10, 15 years. So Pearl needed to get his ass killed. He over there in another people's country with a fucking movie camera. You know what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, now, he's so interested in Pearl. You understand what I'm saying? He's so interested in this type thing. You see, then he goes to the, what you call it, he goes to the, 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 million, the, the, the Savior's Day this year and say, I am a Jew. The Jews are my best friend. I am this. Whoever it was, it was a bunch of our enemies he said he sided with. You see what I'm saying? So they got him all in the mix, so they had to take out the radical players, start knocking them all one by one. You see what I'm saying? But, but, they, but, but, but the protection here is, it's still the radical players that is still caught up into the political bullshit who do not, not want to do with anything spiritual. And religion has nothing to do with spirit. You see what I'm saying? So we talking about straight up sorcery. The stuff that you've been trained to be negative about, if you ain't dealing with the sorcery, the white man come after you. Because sorcery is just another ancient word for the word alchemy. Plain and simple. The word alchemy. And if you're not dealing with the scientific element of looking this regime in the face of this oligarchy, this evilarchy in the face with your own magic, you see what I'm saying? Then therefore they say we don't have no problem coming and seizing this motherfucker right now because he still don't get it. It ain't about no religion. It ain't about no Yahweh. It ain't about no overseer, no absentee landlord that you call God. If you are not the center of the power, then the white boy say you ain't nothing but cattle. Seize that motherfucker, his property, his children, and his life. And that's what this thing is now. This thing is drawn now between the gods, period. Anybody that's dealing with anything outside of your own center of power, your own heart chakra, your own third eye, yeah. your own will to move your energy forward on the stage of what it's supposed to be dealing with. And the white boy say, you ain't nothing but cattle. Mm. And this thing is going down tonight. It ain't even got nothing to do. It's, it's, it's even beyond race now. Right. That's right. That's right. This thing here now, man, because, you know, we, I mean, I think we wasting a little time up in here and all because the simple fact that we don't understand the difference is we're talking about a civilization versus culture. And so, therefore, you got the majority of people entrenched in a civilization. You understand what I'm saying? So there's a difference between culture and a, civil, and a civilization. We talk about a culture that we're trying to learn, but then again, that don't guarantee us nothing. The key here is, it's about what magic you're dealing with now. And the magic now is not even just going down to the ritual. It's going down to your mind. Because that means if you got to do the ritual, that means you got to wait and pull up a force field around you, but the force field can only last for so long because it's on the physical earth. Right now, you got to condition your mind. And I know it can be a little lonely because we always are conditioned to want somebody to think that they got our back. But obviously, somebody in heaven ain't got our back. <laughs> Just like them damn rappers got that song, Please, Satan, save me from God. I know that sounds tough. But obviously, putting all their doggone energy in God, you know what it's gotten. But then again, on the other hand, it's simple. It's all, it's, it's right there in the book of Isaiah. You know, the God is talking about the God in you. 
That's the only Lord and the only law there is. So right now you can pray all the hell you want. They got six million black men in prison, as it says in uh, October 2000, and I'm quite sure in order for these people to get parole, they got to get down with some form of religion. That's the key. They got to become either Islamic or they got to become mostly Christian. And if they really want to get out, they got to go to that Christian side. You see what I'm saying? Because since 9 11, they better be Holy Blackfoot, Captain Crunch, Baptist. You see, to get out. That's one of the, that's one of the, that's one of the, uh, you know, that's one of the rules. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, a November the 13th, 2000. Newsweek, yeah. 14 million Americans, mostly 98% 98, 98 of those blacks. So my point here is, going back down to this particular science, the lines have been drawn. We don't even have no kind of ally. We don't even, you don't even have white allies no more for the simple fact is this. Everybody bought into this damn 9-11 bullshit. And you know, I was sitting back baffled because I thought personally that white people had a little more sense than this. I figured, you know, we, we being oppressed, we understand our problem. You know what I'm saying? But I thought that white folks had a little more going on in this than to just take this shit lock, stock, and barrel. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no questions asked. You see, when they say that FEMA moved in the day before to secure the perimeter. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, I knew something was up because, um, I knew something was up because I was traveling with the sister to put out the newsletters. We was up in New York. She went back a day before. She went back, I was supposed to fly on 9-11, about 12 o'clock 9-11 time. She, she flew out, she was supposed to go back with me, but she had to go a day earlier. When she got to the airport, they said, where's Mr. Hemet? She said, well, he's going tomorrow or whatever. They said, are you sure you wanna go? They kept asking her this. You know what I'm saying? She's saying, well, they're saying, you know, she said, Lord, I'm going to pay the fucking $70 because I got to go. I got to be back. Are you sure you want to go? So now this is the way it goes. It's not like, oh, it was a big Bobby Hemet conspiracy, but this is the way they do. When they plan things, they plan things. They said, well, what about this community? What about that community? So they plan a summit. They try to get it all one time. So when this thing hit, I was walking down the street, and the spirit said, whatever you do, do not go to that damn airport. And at the time, I, we had a, 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 a newsletter that we had put out, uh, like a catalog, had a big old picture of Khalid Muhammad up in there. I said, man, anything Islamic is all they need. And yes, they can lock you down, and you can still be up in there, and ain't nothing nobody can do. You see what I'm saying? So they was trying to say, we calling in all of them. You see what I'm saying? So, so when, they, when this whole thing hit, they had everybody. You see, they had already considered everybody it was going to go after. They're going to go after. Now, the first thing happened was is it took me about a week to get out of New York. Uh, to get out of New York. Uh, they had a sister named Kimberly that was at the conference that, uh, that did the goddess stuff. She, was, she had moved to New York about two years earlier and was moving back down to Atlanta. And so when I called her, her sister was like, man, you ride on time. She needs somebody to ride down with her. It was interesting. It took us three, it took us all the way to that Friday to get out. And that Friday we had to leave like, three o'clock in the morning, and then they had the bridges all locked down like they was looking for people. They was looking for these so-called, quote unquote, subversive people. They already knew that number one, I was from Atlanta, they knew I didn't go and pick up my ticket, you see? And so therefore they was looking, and the, uh, a monsoon came down so much until the car was almost sliding. And, the mon and when we got on the bridge, it was raining so hard until they was like, they wasn't even searching people, they was letting people go. And so we, they had the Staten Island locked down two or three days and we got on the Staten Island and hit the New Jersey Turnpike and then went and then when we got to D.C. we had to detour because they were looking for people in D.C. Now this is interesting because I never heard why they had this excuse when I got back home. When I got back home we stepped in the house at 11 o'clock on, because uh, we left 3 o'clock Friday, uh, 3 o'clock uh, Friday morning. We got back to the, we got, got to Atlanta about 11 o'clock. Friday night, and they cut on the news, and they were saying there's an Atlanta connection to the bombing. They never explained what it was. And Kimberly being the psychic, she, she said, I wonder what that is. If they done threw some bullshit up in the mix. They was waiting for the phone to ring, and I got on the phone 
that night and started calling because the phone was buzzed. The next day, she called me. She said, I want you to come help me move in my apartment. She said, I'm coming about, about 2 o'clock. So they had to hightail it over to 2 o'clock. So they was actually, actually literally coming. And so they just said, oh, we already got it on the news that there's an Atlanta connection. We already know what we can do. And the only thing we got to do is just say some shit and everybody be like, I always knew that nigga was strange. You know, all the people who ain't in the consciousness or whatever the deal was. And so they had 25 police cars roll up, two helicopters and these, three, these two big ass trucks. And they, they roll up, it was almost like, and we were on the front porch and, and, and Kimberly was like, I wonder, she said, that's for you. But she said, and we look, I said, but they can't even see us. We was like right there on the front porch. They rolled up all these cars. It was almost like they couldn't even see us. And so they got a little embarrassed, like it was looking for something. They got a little embarrassed. They got back in the cars and rolled off real fast, like they was, like they was still searching. And so we knew they, it, was, it, was, it was almost like they tried to do this here. They came back on December the 19th, but had the wrong motherfucking street. So the house that they raided was literally a house two streets over, literally in the same area where my house was. You see what I'm saying? So the point here is the people who dealt with the magic or the people who dealt with some stuff other than, oh, I'm just a good Jew, or I'm just a good Hebrew, I'm a just a good Rasta, I'm just a good Islamic and stuff, those are the people that survived this damn thing. You see what I'm saying? They survived this thing. And the other people that you see that's going down, it's because they got caught up out there because they're not dealing with the shit. They're still talking shit about the, the, the centers of power and the magic that will save them. That's the difference. You see, so anybody up in here, ooh, sorcery. Nobody ever studied this stuff to try to find out what it is. You go buy the damn Bible if you want to. That's the same book the government go by. <laughs> you go buy that if you want to. It'll land your ass right in prison. Or what they say, you might as well go ahead and kill him now. He ain't figured the shit out yet. You know what I'm saying? The damn a book that we done took us damn 200 books away from, and you figure that's going to be your guideline. You know what I'm saying? Some motherfucker need a couple more of them books. <laughs> hey, you want somebody going to give you a book that done took damn, it ain't no pages, ain't no chapters. They say it's volumes. Whole damn volumes they done took, and all of a sudden, this is your guideline. You got a piece of Swiss cheese. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? A damn Mars code book. <laughs> and this is supposed to be the doggone guideline. Because you grew up on something, don't make the shit authentic. You see? So they, uh, don't make it authentic. Now I want to deal with a couple of things right now, baby, deal with the magic. Because um, I want to give people this particular recipe here. Yeah. Um, this particular recipe here. This is, uh, this is some stuff, and, and we've already tried this stuff around the country. When I was, um, this was an all-access healer. It can heal you physically, and it can heal you socially also. <laughs> <laughs> now, first thing they said, because we got this whole new thing now. See, now, and see, see, we got, see, since the Afrocentric movement, we done got a couple of other cultures done, done popped up. So, there was a culture, so you know, it's stress diet. Well, naturally, diet, you stress diet because based on your physical body, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, if you eat every damn thing, you understand, you're going to have problems. But that's basically as far as it's supposed to go. But now you got a whole nother people now. They done, they done mastered their little diet, and now it's a new religion. So now you got a whole class of motherfucking black people just sit around and talk about what other black people eat. Uh, and, and, and think that this is some kind of way that's going to allow their ass entry <laughs> into fucking heaven. And they just did a report. They said that they ain't got one motherfucking vegetarian past the age of 100 in the United States of America. Not one. So even that, you see, one past the age of one. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that it's not rational that, yes, there's a thing where you can watch your diet, but I'm trying to say, well, we didn't got this thing down to. You got a whole bunch of people that it's become a religion. Because down here with the ego, it will, it will lock on to anything, you see what I'm saying, to get away from the right path. And so therefore, those become your crutch and your religions. You see what I'm saying? So even piety and righteousness becomes a crutch. You see what I'm saying? 
It becomes a crutch. So we got all these schisms and shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So you got a whole bunch of damn rosters that figure if your dreadlocks ain't nappy, you ain't got the true shit. Like a motherfucker didn't have a comb in Africa. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we got all these little thousands of the, all the sacred deodorant and all that old bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All the ooh, you know, and say, I done learned all this so-called shit that's supposed to be spiritual. Ain't really spiritual at all. 99% of what, I'm going to be honest with you. 99% of what true spirit is, most motherfuckers don't even get on that level. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, you shit, running around the house naked might be a fucking true spirit. You see what I'm saying? But all the piety, so now we have become fanatics in these particular things which was only tools. Now we done latched on to the dog on tools and stuff, you see what I'm saying? And now we've become more fanatic, and I'm going to tell you, let's in on another little secret. Now white folks are more ancient in the aspect of the real thing than we are. We are now Victorian, Puritan, Mennonites, Amish, pious, righteous shit here and all. You see what I'm saying? And we're not giving away to the actual, which we're going to really get into now, the, today, the actual things, those urges and those particular things, the indulging that makes the creativity of what they call creative imagination that makes melanin work. It's all in the movie Chocolate. Anybody see the movie Chocolate? Get the goddamn movie Chocolate and see this movie. You know, this recent came out in 2000. They put it out in 2000. You see, but they put all white cast up in there and then we missed the shit. You see, you see, you know what I'm saying? So my point here is, we have now become the so-called Presbyterians, you see. And all this type of stuff here, and that shuts down the muse. You got to learn what the muse is. The muse is the, is the basis of how melanin works, the muse, the creativity. The muse, the mermaid, the freak. We're talking about giving way to a new paradigm of creation. Nothing that is in marginalized boundaries. Because when you try to marginalize this or put it in boundaries, it dies. The muse has to express itself. You see what I'm saying? It has to express itself. So in so many words, mental illness is a higher state of spirituality than motherfuckers is good logic. So next time you see a nigga that's mentally ill or a woman that's mentally ill, take heed. That's another form of the spirit coming out. The muse has to express itself. What's that? I work at a mental uh, friend's hospital. And uh -huh. a lady they diagnosed with bipolar and paranoid schizophrenia. There you go. She and I were talking, and she, my name is Osiris, and this woman started breaking down the Egyptian, Roman, the Norse guys, and lined them up with the astrological and numerological makeup, and the doctor's like, well, she's just... Just, right, yeah. Just do let me tell you. See, every now and then when you try to label some stuff, every now and then something new will come out. So I had a homeboy of mine come up from Mullins, South Carolina. He's from Detroit. He lived in Detroit, but his, his, his base is from Mullins. The nigga was down in Mullins when he came up to Atlanta. So he's sitting around. He busts up in there, all these conscious people sitting around and stuff like that and all, you know, and all. You know, we, get, we, we got some little sauce going, some juice I'm getting ready to give you in a few minutes about the muse. <laughs> and, um, so he, he, and so he's sitting around, so somebody going to try to be smart and ask this Mullins Negro some conscious questions, knowing this brother don't know what the shit this is. You see what I'm saying? So they're going to ask this nigga some stuff, boy, and the next thing we know, this brother start dropping down and start breaking down shit by the area 57. <laughs> The UFO this, Atlantis this, the unearthing of Atlantis that they got in for Cuba. He's just going rattling this shit on and on and on again. And they come in and say, your goddamn homeboy up in here is dropping like a motherfucker. <laughs> Next thing we know, he up in there preaching. They got damn holy sanctified having church with this cat. <laughs> and I say, see, you never know where the spirit is going to hit. 
where the spirit is going to hit. Then he said, now, nah, fuck that. I was in the damn army, and the motherfuckers had me out of that area 51. I've been knowing about this shit for years. You see what I'm saying? So my point here is, is you can't rule nothing out, but whenever you try to put things in boundary, now the conscious motherfuckers are the ones that's the most holy sanctified and the most Christianized now <laughs> and canonicalized and pasteurized and homogenized. <laughs> the conscious people. All the way down. You see what I'm saying? That's what we are now and all, you see. So now in actuality, we used to be people on the other side of the tracks. Now we in the mainstream. You see what I'm saying? We're in the mainstream, so there's a, there's a very thin line on how you have to track this particular thing right here and all. So it's going to have to give away to some creative visual, visualization, creative imagination, and 98% are giving away to those things in actuality that you think that in actuality is unrighteous. That's the key. Now, um, before I go on, I want to give this particular thing out and all. Uh, Back in August, I had some, uh, a psychic attack. We'll go into some of that type of thing and all. Anyway, some, some entities hit the side of my mouth and totally destroyed the side of my gums and all. So in actuality, so uh, this thing was killing me. So when I, I called one of the channels up, and I told her to call on Zara Banda, which is which I, I introduced that in a few minutes. I said, well, you, know, you need to give me some type of remedy of what needs to be done, because obviously something has hit me. And because I got in the crossfire of a war, this uh, war principalities that was going on. The old gods are leaving, okay. and then there's an, and, a, and there's a new one that's supposed to take the reign. This uh, take the reign. It's a family fight, but then again, these ones don't want to relinquish the power and all because they have become egomaniacs and, and and they have a form of mental illness. You don't understand that the gods can, can have a form of mental illness too. That's why the Africans say the gods must be crazy. You see what I'm saying now. So I got in the crossfire of this thing, so to remedy this thing, uh, they told me to mix brown liquor, no, yeah, no, no, white liquor and brown whiskey. White liquor and brown whiskey. So I had some gin, and then I had some scotch. But that was the first thing. Anyway, whatever it is, when I, when I mixed it, I said, man, you got to be crazy as hell, because I was in pain. You know, even I after so much pain on the physical, you know what I'm saying? Every now and then the little metaphysical thing be like becomes secondary. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a damn minute here. They was like, wait, hold on now. Just do what the fuck we say. So I came to my senses, mixed this thing up, and immediately within like, within like 15 minutes, the stuff had subsided and basically there was a whole process that went on. And basically, these entities got in my mouth, and they repaired my whole gums and shit that was better than what they were 20 years ago. All right. Now, since then, I went, on, went ahead and perfected this particular science. But I, I did a little bit of research and did a little, a little bit of other stuff and come to find out that the distillation of alcohol was brought to the European by the Moors. Uh -huh. okay. All your scotch, your, your vodkas, your rum, you see what I'm saying, and uh, your, your, uh, your genes and all that stuff? Yeah. Those were alchemical sciences of the doggone Moors that brought that to the doggone white boys in Europe. And they became the master distillers. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So when they came with this science, they was giving me an ancient art form, not necessarily this being the, the, the uh, uh, doing the healing, but this being a catalyst or a gateway for something else. So in so many words to try to understand what went on, get the book Rudolf Steiner's Universe, Earth, and Man, Rudolf Steiner's Cosmic, Me uh, Cosmic Memory, and Rudolf Steiner's Spiritual Hierarchies. And in these books he explains that, you know, surgery was always a last resort when it comes to anything in the, uh, they did do surgery, now don't get me wrong, you know, they also did pharmaceutical. Don't slide on the pharmaceutical. The pharmaceutical is African too. See, we didn't see it's not that pharmaceutical is not African. What the white boy is saying, only pharmaceutical. So he said nothing medicinal, nothing, you see what I'm saying? And herbal, only pharmaceutical, because that was a political move for billions of dollars. So don't, don't but pharmaceutical is he's not the origin of the pharmaceutical. We did the pharmaceutical shit. In Kemet. Okay.
That's why when, when, when Timothy Leary and them was dealing with that acid, which was melanin dimensional science, they shut his program down. You see what I'm saying? It was all just a whole lot of this. This thing here is much wider than what we think it is. But we're chewing on logs and all this kind of shit here. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't getting no spiritual doggone converts on a whole nother level. We're just the same old motherfuckers around here. Walking around here, you know, all righteous and stuff like this and all, you know. And ain't nothing happening. You see. So we're going to get into some other science today on the hard line, new technology, researching the old stuff. Only that which has been forgotten. So, so anyway, they talk about how they used to go in and 98% of the people they, they would heal. Let's say uh, what they would do is, is they would, just like in Europe, you got your head, your head, you are Obatala head, you are Oshun head, you are Yemenya, you this. Well, they would have the head based on the temple. So based on your astrological makeup, based on your, you know, your astrological makeup, based on your alchemical makeup, based on different components that make you a doggone person, they would say, well, this person here is a half-hour person, and they ship that person off to Dendera. This person here is, 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 this person is old Osiris person, so they would ship that person off to Luxor. You see what I'm saying? This person is an Armin Ra person. They would ship that person off to Karnak. This person is an Aset person. They ship it off to Philae. So they got these different temples set up for energy. And you would, they would ship you off based on your prototype, phenotype, your, your alchemical, astrological, or whatever it is that make you a person. They would ship you to these particular temples that had your energy line up that could, could correspond with the energy in your body. And they would put you on these particular tables and basically do this ritual and call down these entities, and these entities would come down and heal the body. So about like in the movie Stargate, where they had to, they put them in these sarcophagus, and it came and, and, and it and covered up, covered them up, and when, and when they got, and when it opened back up, they were healed. And they said that the physical bodies is the easiest bodies to prepare. Okay. So it's the same thing what would happen. This was an advanced science. You see what I'm saying? Based on these particular temples, that was multi-level temples. You see, for healing and all other types of things. This is science that we forgot. Mm -hmm. About like a university, where they would take you, you know, you do certain things. But anyway, this is one of the, some of the science. Well, what it was is when they had this mixture, it was an alchemical mixture of the light and the dark. And it came, but, but it came with three sisters. There was six entities that came to me in March of 2000. And these were supposed to be some entities that were supposed to be entities that it was supposed to replace other existing hierarchies or principalities that rule over us in the age of creation. Because creation is over. You see what I'm saying? Creation is over. It ain't about nature no more. It's about the freak of nature. It is about that which is beyond nature. You see what I'm saying? That's why nature is even not 100% now. Nature is you know what I'm saying? Just look at the fucking animals. Yeah. Remember we said, look at them sharks this past summer. And there's them sharks that's biting motherfuckers up. Well, when I went out to Denver in October, they didn't need to add a whole nother damn history out there that the people in Denver, Colorado was talking about. They was like, yeah, we heard about the sharks. The sharks was biting people all over here. You know, mainly white folks, but it was the first time in history them sharks was biting niggas too. Because they know that we're all the fucking same now. It's all squalor. But when I went out to Denver, they were saying, no, they had a bear epidemic out here. I'm like, dude, we didn't even hear about that shit on this, on the East Coast. They said, man, the bears was coming out there and fucking up all them crackers. <laughs> so they had a bear epidemic. And based on some other part of the world or whatever, they had some other kind of epidemic. You see what I'm saying? They had some other type of epidemic. So, uh, so they, so, uh, we're talking about something that is above nature now. Been there, done that with the other thing. Got the t-shirt. You know, when it comes to the other nature thing. Now we're talking about a mutation. You see what I'm saying? Mutation. I got an azalea bush in the damn house. And you know, the azaleas, uh, they come out like the early spring and they be gone by the damn Easter. 
But if all of a sudden, it had all these pink flowers in it, but then it produced one flower that was candy cane striped. I said, that's a fucking mutation. Every now and then, no matter how rigid the rules are, something will change. You know niggas is famous for that shit. No matter how rigid the rules are, when it comes to Negroes, something new gonna happen. You know, something new gonna happen. You see what I'm saying? No matter how rigid the rules are. We'll get into some of that too in a few minutes on the freak side of these things. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> we go push this shit to the limit. But we, now, so we're talking about a junk in nature. Well, these, these particular, the gods of creation now are on their way out. Just like all forms of nature is having a different change. Give you an example. We now have the ability with our, in our minds to do what the hell we want. Give you an example. Around the country, they had these, um, these gas companies. You got the, the, the gas companies, the phone companies. What they call it when they come in and the, the major gas companies don't do it no more. They are. Utility. Yeah, utility. They got these other little companies. They come in and they deregulate shit. Deregulation. This is going on all over the country. So in 2000, they had this deregulation of gas companies all up the East Coast. Then the damn gas just shot up. Motherfuckers paying like 40, 50, 60 dollars, you know, and stuff. All of a sudden, the gas bill, 200 dollars. So they got black people that used to, that's, that's, that's been paying gas bills since the 1930s. Old ass black women and black men and stuff, bill six, seven hundred dollars. And so the white boy come in and start cutting off gas. So they cut off all these people gas. I'm going to show you the science on this. So they cut off all these people gas. And it, then it took the crack a, a, a while to figure this out. They cut off all the people gas. So the people were like, well, fuck it. You know, it's spring. They cut off the gas in April of 2001. So my brother just, you know, we improvise. You know what I'm saying? Put the hot water on the motherfucking stove to wash the dishes, take the shower. And the summer it gets so hot, a cold shower, five seconds into it, it becomes warm. Right. See what I'm saying? And some of these black people remember when there wasn't no damn hot water. <laughs> or a limited amount. Some motherfuckers just went back into their survival mode. Right, right. All right? So, so what happened was the black people just adjusted. You see what I'm saying? They just adjusted. Then in the fall of the year, the niggas were like, wait a minute, hold on. And I thought about this shit here. I'm getting all paranoid. I'm like, wait a minute. You have become this new Negro. And I said, I can remember... In my house, when we had gas, we didn't have no central fucking heat and all that shit down south. You could be in one room, it's warm, walk in the hallway and it's freezing. Your mama said, close that door, you letting all the heat out. Yes. I'm saying, well, damn. How the hell, if, if, what, I, what have I become that I can't go back to that mode? Because my gas was one of them gas that got cut off. So I improvised all summer. Then the motherfucker got kind of cold around October. I started getting scared. You see what I'm saying? No, but I said, wait a minute, hold on. They got the new technology now. They got these space heaters, not like that Carathon shit. <laughs> Motherfucker be consolidating. We have a high electricity bill, but we ain't got no gas bill. So in Atlanta, all the damn space heaters sold out. <laughs> they were like, no, y'all got to wait two weeks, man. You, you missed this load. So niggas was going way out in white people areas just to get space heaters. You know, white people gas is on. So they got to go to the Walmart. 25 miles out. You see what I'm saying? The target, 30 miles out. Because all the one in Metro Atlanta, the gas cut off. So all of a sudden, they got little space heaters going. They get warm in the, in the, in the evening. It, I mean, cool in the evening, warm in the, um, during the regular day hours. And then this thing went from doggone September, October, December, and the ship was still hot. The ship was still hot. And we walk around, niggas walk around in short sleeve, and then the government, and then the government, so stupid, they finally figured the shit out. They were like, wait a minute, hold on. We're not going to have our motherfucking white Christmas. We're not going to have that cold air to tell these people to get in this mall and shop, because this is all a science. You see what I'm saying? There is a Christmas spirit providing somebody take some esoteric motif and sit around something. This is magic, and we fall for it. So they was like, hold on, something going on, man. This heat, this, it ain't happening. 
And then the government stepped in and go, oh, shit. We just figured out what happened. So many words. Black people, in their minds, because they had their space heater, they were like, Lord, I'm all right right now. I just pray that it don't get cold. So, so many fucking black people were thinking this shit. They had like thousands of black people thinking this shit. I just pray it don't get cold. And after a while, they was changing the fucking weather. The weather wasn't getting cold. So the government say, wait a minute, fuck this shit. The government figured out. They say, man, we got to do something. So the next thing you know, they got these people going, sign the dollar line, we'll cut on your gas tomorrow. These low service providers just all of a sudden start popping up. So they, they made a little squirmish like, you know, we got to vote on this shit. They, you know, do all that stuff there. They said, okay, you all can do it. And they start cutting on people's gas like, they was like, they shit, they, they rolled on my ass about a month ago. Cut my shit off, finally. Cut my shit off again. I picked up the phone. Somebody said, we'll be out tomorrow to cut your shit on. You see? So the next thing we know, they'll start cutting on all these black people gas. Black people cooled out, it got cold, and them crackers started going de dealing with all that, doing the doggone, you see, dealing with that, uh, that whole Christmas thing. So my point here is that even everything, nothing is what it's supposed to be. It's just that we don't have the mindset to understand that this shit been changed and been gone. And it's all based on your mentality now. You see what I'm saying? Now, dealing with this. With this, there's six deities that came. Cheola, Teacha, uh, Cheola, no, Otincha, Cheola, Teacha, Omagumu, Shumala, Lokeo, and Kakumbo. So it's about close to six or seven deities. And these entities that showed up in the spring of the year. And what it was is that these was, was, was entities that had been dormant for millions of years based on creation that rose back up to take over the slots of the ones that was that the ones that was ruling prior to them. And what it is is some of the same entities that you studied in the underwear, they just come with new names. They say that it, the, the person he needs a new name. The emperor needs a new name. You see what I'm saying? I send the movie, uh, A Never Ending Story. You got to call out the new name. So these new names came. So it was three women, Shayola, Teacha, and Otincha. And so two of them showed up in August, Shayola and Teacha, and gave this particular concoction. Then Otincha, which was one also, she's the, so Shayola is a healing spirit, great mother. Teacha is a healing spirit, more, more like half our head, hair, rule, our set. Half the and Isis, then you got Otichi, which is a fire, like segment. So they got new names. So they came up and gave this concoction. This, the liquor is only a doorway for these particular entities to enter in and start healing or doing other things. So now I prefer.